listening to A Very, Very Cold Podcast with your hosts, Ryan Noble and Ryan MacArthur. On today's episode, the Colts record, their roster, and more. So enjoy it. It's my boring jaws harness is awesome Often in dead mics I grip with my paw prints on with the sharp Hello and welcome to a very very cool podcast I am your host Ryan Noble and with me again today we have Ryan MacArthur here for our uh, first episode since the season started together I feel like it's been forever since uh since uh we've we've had the chance to to do this you know uh, we had Big Chris from Big Radio uh for the last show and you know he 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 did a good job uh, but having you back, obviously, uh, as being a contributor at the blog and your knowledge on the team and all things OHL, you know, it's it's good to have you back anyway. Yeah, I'm pumped to, to get back talking about the Colts. So we started the season 9-9-1, uh, nine, nine and one, sitting at 500 right now. Uh, not too bad, 74 goals for, 63 goals against. So the boys are putting up a lot of goals, which is great. They got the... Second most goals in the Central Division. Niagara's got uh, 75. But yeah, that Central Division is tight, eh? It really is. First place, Mississauga and Sudbury with uh, 24 points. And the Colts have 19 points. So only five points back. And all five teams have played 19 games. Pretty interesting. Really, really tight. Even if you were to break apart the whole Eastern Conference, I mean, the only team that's kind of running away with everything right now is the uh, Ottawa 67s who have 36 points. If you uh, look at that division there, I mean, Oshawa's in second with 22, so that's 14 points ahead of the second-place wow. team. Yeah. Um, Ottawa, so- Ottawa's just killing it. That's crazy. Um, I, what are they, number two in Canada right now? they got to be pushing for number one. I'm not sure who's number one right now, but well, that's pretty close to the top in the CHL. It's pretty solid. Well, and you figure they've gotten a point in their last 16 games. They haven't had a regulation loss in that time. A uh, couple, uh, just a pair of uh, overtime losses. But other than that, past 10, I mean, they're 8 0 2 0. Oh, so. look at the 14 0 2. Yeah, yeah. The last it's, 16. That's exactly. crazy. Not so even not... regulation losses. So, I mean, in 16 yeah. games, they've at least gotten a point. But in 14 of those, they've. Wow. They've gotten the W, so uh, they are just running away with it right now. But we are not here to fully talk about the Ottawa 67. <laughs> we're, we're here to talk about the Colts, and obviously uh, this, this last little stretch here this past week, they, well, they're on a three-game losing streak right now. And, I mean, it's not like those were necessarily, like, losses where they were blown out of the water. And in a lot of these games that they've lost, they've been tight games, you know, and they've, they've managed to kind of be in it. It's just unfortunately uh, – whether it be late in the game where they've kind of just lost it. But uh, you actually today were uh, at Barry Colts practice, kind of getting an idea of, you know, if the team maybe is trying anything different or what. It, what anything stand out for you there today? Yeah, I was at practice today. Um, it's actually the first Colts practice I've ever been to. It's surprising that I've never been to one before, but I thought that would be kind of fun. I had a free afternoon, so I just thought I'd go down and check it out. Um, team's looking pretty good. I, I like a lot of the players. I'm, I think that even though they're at a, a record of nine, nine and one, I think they are a lot better than their record indicates. Uh, so yeah, um, right now it's, uh, the lines are looking like, uh, so you got Chiodo on left wing, Suzuki at center and Pekka on right wing. They're all wearing the blue jerseys today. So that's your first line for the Colts. And uh, obviously Ryan Suzuki leading the charge there, the star center draft eligible for the Barry Colts. Uh, Suzuki's uh, sitting around seventh to twelfth in most um, mock drafts right now and uh, draft rankings for the 2019 NHL draft. Um, yeah, he's looking pretty good. Well, you've seen him slowly kind of climbing a lot of people's uh, ranks. So I mean, with the amount of time left in the season, if if the team can kind of just work towards more production and stuff that there's no reason that he can't continue to climb. Like, I mean, a lot of us, especially in the blog, uh, you, myself and Justin, we, I mean, we've been touting that he'll probably, by the time the draft comes, he could end up moving into that top five. Yeah. And- I, I mean, I, I think he's going to go in the top five it, a center with that kind of ability. They're pretty rare. Um, he's got a really high ceiling. I, I don't see it at any teams letting him go too far past five. 
Um, there's a lot of good players in this draft. So uh, he's a good uh, fifth overall pick. Um, and he's really stepped up his game. Like I've been uh, doing a little scouting. I started a new gig with uh, Draft Pro. Um, so I'm going to watch uh, lots of OHL games. I uh, scouted the Five Nations uh, online, different things. Um, but yeah, so I've, I've seen Suzuki live a few times this year um, on the road and a bunch of games at home. Um, and the, the, the big thing I've noticed is he's adding different things to his game. He's really attacking the middle of the ice and like really nice puck rushes. He's really confident with the puck. You mm-hmm. notice him oh, moving absolutely. the puck up ice. And, and he never looks like he's rushed. You know, like he just looks like, like he's got such good composure with it. Mm-hmm. And he's not like... You know, a lot of guys, they get it and they try to make something happen quickly. But, I mean, patience is something that generally guys kind of figure out as they get older, you know. And as they kind of get more experience, you see that aspect of the game develop. But with him, I mean, as soon as he came into the fold here, you know, like it's it's an attribute that you noticed right away. And just as time is going on with this, like you just notice his patience with the puck is just getting better. Yeah. And, like, there's nothing more scary, especially for a goalie, when you've got someone like Ryan Suzuki coming in on you and you don't know, like, what he's going to do or when he's <laughs> yeah. going to do it, you know. And, and it's it's just it's just such a good skill to have already at this point in his career. And, I mean, it's just going to get better as he, he progresses, you know. And hopefully if the team can kind of build off what they've kind of been working towards lately, uh, I mean, that's just going to get better. And once line mates kind of get used to – what he's going to do, uh, it's really tough when you don't have that same, you know, not to say that they don't have the same skill set, but I mean, Suzuki's a special talent, obviously. Yeah, Suzuki's the best player on the Barry Colts right now. Um, I, I just love this new aspect of his game of attacking the middle of the ice. He he basically lets the defense dictate what he's going to do. So when he's moving in, if they overplay him or overcompensate, he'll feed it off to somebody. If they back up, he's just going to keep going. And um, he's really really good at reading the D. Uh, I really like I really like how he's doing that this year. The part of the game I really like is the no look passes. Like, I've noticed he does a lot of – he'll have his body turn the opposite way. I mean, we look in the opposite way, and he'll just fire the puck over. Um, It's just incredible. Like, overall, his passes are all hard, accurate, very crisp, like right on the tape. Like, it's unbelievable. And he also mixes in those finesse passes that we're used to seeing, Mm -hmm. forehand, backhand, whatever. And, of course, he's a great skater. Uh, We've talked about that. Absolutely. Turning, stopping, everything. He's He's got it all. So, uh, well, and he's, yeah. he's got that passing mentality too, you know, and I mean, like if you look at the top, uh, the five point getters on the team, I mean, he's got the least shots on goal of all of those guys, you know, I mean, you look at like Kyoto or Kyoto, he's got, he's got 50 or yeah, 53 shots. And then like Suzuki's got 47, but Picard, he's got 70, uh, Tucker shooting wow. constantly as well from the point. And I mean, obviously that's translated in him, uh, with his, his four goals already this season. So it's they just need to keep keep that up. Yeah, Suzuki. I guess you're you're looking at seven goals, twenty assists, twenty seven points in seventeen games. He had that minor injury there. He missed a couple games, uh, which was unfortunate. But that's putting him at uh, one point five nine points per game. Should we go one point six and round it up? Let's round it up. <laughs> round up. So he's he's doing pretty good. He's got the most points per game on the team. Uh, Chiodo's got him by a bit with 29 points, but he's uh, also played a couple extra games. So pretty great start for Ryan Suzuki in his draft year. He's uh, he's looking good. He played for Team Canada in the Canada-Russia series last night. Canada lost, uh, well, I guess I should say Team OHL uh, lost 4 nothing to Russia, unfortunately. But uh, Suzuki looked pretty solid in the game and um, had the center ice roll. He even got some spots in the power play. Uh, moved the puck well, played his game. He looked good. Yeah, I mean, just I just ha- even just having like Suzuki and uh, Chioda there on that top pairing, and that those two have been a lock anyways. Yeah. And obviously with Chioda, he leads the uh, the team in goals right now with thirteen, uh, and only one of those have been on the power play. So it's not you know like I mean he's he's 
he's usually scoring like when it's five on five. And I mean, he's still got 16 assists with that for a total of 29 points, uh, which is the most on the team right now. Again, worth mentioning, he's played in uh, two more games than, than Suzuki has, but I mean, they're only two parts points apart anyways. So it's yeah. just really, really, uh, really, really top uh, or really tight there as far as the top production. Um, yeah, it's pretty good. Plus 15 as well. And Ryan Suzuki's at plus 10. Those two are the, the top one, two, and plus minus. So plus 15 for Chioto. Chido is, is looking pretty solid. He's got some highlight reel goals, was too. It like two weeks ago where he did that ridiculous spin a yeah. goal and then he wrapped it around the yeah, net. I think backhand. that was uh, the yeah. OHL play of the week that, that week, and it was just ridiculous. Yeah, he even made that uh, what the they CHL do, the, showdown The thingy. CHL showdown, yeah. yeah, where you get voting. So um, if that voting's still open, make sure you get out there and support uh, Lucas. I think it was actually as of yesterday. I still saw it getting uh, yeah. shared as well. So, I, I mean, he's it. just been ridiculous. He's just, I mean... Again, 13 goals, 16 assists. He's just been, he's been consistent. And I mean, he's always like his, we don't need to talk about his speed. He's ridiculous. Uh, you wouldn't even guess that he's one of the much smaller mm-hmm. guys, the way he plays. And he's just been outstanding and he's been consistent. So, I mean, he's just, he's probably going to smash his numbers this oh, season. For things sure. keep going. He's going over, uh, he's going over a hundred, I think. Um, he, you look at Chioto, like his shots a lot better in practice today. He was just wiring them, and it was like just right under the crossbar, like going bar down. Just oh man, he's got a wicked snapshot, and I don't know, like goalies don't know what he's doing. He'll fake it, and then he'll just deke them right out. He's got a lot of dekes and kind of uh, p- really nice goals this year. He's really and him, smart yeah, player. passing with Suzuki, like they just pass it back and forth, and I don't think the goalies know where it's going at this point. Right, and he's got five five assists on the power play, so I mean, he's been a guy that has been contributing at least on the man advantage. Yeah, uh, you know, some nights the 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 power play looks decent, some nights we'll go zero for eight on the man advantage, and you know that's an area that they'll probably hope to improve on, especially you know as a team that has so much time in a game with special teams, which we'll, we'll, we'll touch on later. Uh, not a surprise to Colts fans anyways. Mm-hmm. Uh, so who else did they have there on that, that uh, top pairing to the, yeah. So yeah, on the top line, they got uh, Pekka at right wing. He was also on the top line um, in Guelph. So Ben Howard truck's been suspended uh, five games for what happened in Oshawa um, going after Eggenberger and uh, some other things. We'll talk about that. Maybe well, you want to talk about that right now? We can get into it yeah. now, I guess. We've got it. Uh, Why not? Obviously how we make our own is, rules here, right? right? It's, it's the beautiful uh, beauty of producing this as we go and just kind of going off the cuff. Yeah, so uh, Howard Chuck was suspended, as I'm sure all of you know, yeah. four or five games. Uh, originally, the OHL had said that it was for two games, and then just randomly a couple days later, just, you know, in casual OHL fashion, they slid in. And yeah, I got an extra few games. Which, in there. to be fair, I mean, when we after it, we did a. I did the uh, post for the the weekly preview. I I anticipated that he was going to get a lot more. I thought he was going to get uh, eight to ten games, possibly. You know, having a history, you know, the league sometimes not easy on guys like that. Uh, so, but you you got to assume that the 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 main, well the two games automatically would go for the the fighting in the final five minutes of regulation. So, I mean, it was a lot that that was going to happen. Didn't help his case that he went after a guy that obviously had no interest in fighting him. <laughs> no. uh, when he pulled him down, he also uh, he also pulled down the linesman, which probably didn't help his case at no. the time. And, uh, you know, but, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it was just five day, five games. And uh, he's, it's been what, two, after this week, he'll be back. He's already served two games on that suspension. And with the Colts having a, uh, Three games this week. Uh, I think it's it's uh, the game against Auto or uh, sorry Erie, where he'll be returning after this weekend's games. I think it's the next Thursday, not this Thursday, but the following one where he gets to return. So right, yeah, he's gonna miss three more, right? So um, yeah, Howard Check, he got nine goals there in seventeen games, uh, thirteen points. He's looking solid. Uh, he was playing defense at practice today, um, trying to stop the uh, number one penalty kill. So he was working against uh, Jason Wilms was in front of the net and Howard Chuck was giving him a hard time in front of the net trying to just working on things in practice. So he's got three games to miss. So he wasn't working with uh, that power play unit that he was on before he got suspended. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, nine goals in 17 games. That's pretty solid. Plus nine. That's 
yeah. pretty decent. Well, I mean, you look at nine nine goals is it's tied for second most on the team. Uh, only only Chioto has more with thirteen, and that has him in names like with Picard. So nine goals is I think a lot more at this point in the season than many people might have. You know, like I mean, headed into the season, we all had very good things to say about him. I mean, a camp. Yeah, he looked great. He was shooting the puck constantly. He mm-hmm. was hitting the net. It was not just like. You know, he was making pretty good shot selection. So. He's got he's got he's got some power right now. Um, he's really kind of shown that he's increased his strength over the summer. I'm sure he's been working out pretty hard because, like I don't know, everything's just harder, faster, stronger. His play away from the puck, on the puck, everything is just he's just stronger. He's bigger. He's faster, and he's he's proving that. Um, he can play with that top line, and uh, we're pumped for Benny. Go to his uh, Movember page. We got a link to it at the top of the Very Berry Colts uh, web page. He's fighting the good fight for uh, for men's health Absolutely. there, and you it's know. good that all the Colts boys are doing that. Good job, boys. A lot of the boys have those. You see, Allenson's been promoting his a lot, and uh, Murray's got his. A bunch of them are doing it, so it's obviously a great cause, and it's nice yeah. to see the guys uh, trying to support it. Uh, but yeah, so we we gone through the top line there, and Pekka's bitten. You know, he he could be a good addition, anyways. He has gotten some time there. I mean, he's got four goals, five assists. Uh, so I mean, he's he, he still think that he could end up uh, producing a little bit more and maybe getting this next few games. Yeah, on that top line, that could be something yeah, that might it, give him the wake up. I I, I, I like him uh, getting getting put on that line. Um, he he's a good guy. He gets after the puck real well. Really good player. He hasn't had the offensive start that he would have wanted to have. Um, but, I mean, it's it's still early. Um, last year he had a lot of points. He had 49 points last year. So I'm sure he was hoping to have uh, more than nine points through 19 games. But uh, still early. And uh, hopefully the next few games playing with uh, Cheetos and Zook, he can, uh, can put up a few... Uh, a few goals and points. And well, it's tough when you've got the, the lines being juggled kind of the way that yeah. they've had to be in recent weeks, right? So, I mean, it, it's when you can't really, like, solidify, like, who you're playing with sometimes and you're kind of trying to adjust different guys, you know, it's one thing to go and be playing with, like, that top pairing and then to, let's say, go on, like, a third pairing all of a sudden where you're yeah. expecting different things. You know, it's – once 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 we've got, like – those top lines kind of figured out and they are going consistently with them. I think once he kind of has guys that he's more familiar with, mm-hmm. uh, you know, like, I mean, unless he ends up like really, really taking off over these next few games, I mean, it, it's safe to assume that when Benny's off his suspension, he, he will likely end up with that top pairing again. Uh, yeah. Uh, and I mean, he's passing the eye test so far this year. He's looking strong. Um, not getting top power play minutes hurts the point production too. Like absolutely, um, but yeah, he's on. The, he's he is on the second power play, and uh, and hopefully he can uh, he can pump in a few uh, this week with the top line. Mm-hmm. So yeah, the second line we got. They were wearing white jerseys uh, today, and the center there was uh, Jason Wilms, who's also uh, getting top power play minutes right now. The first power play right now is uh, Suzuki, uh, Cheetos, Picard, Wilms, and Joey Keane. So, yeah, so, like, wearing those white jerseys, you also have Picard. So he's on that top power play on that second line. And another guy um, wearing a white jersey is Aiden Brown. So, yeah, Wilms is uh, top power play. He's really good in front of the net. Um, he got a lot of his goals last year in front of the net, and he that's where he was working um, in practice on the power plays in front of the net. He's good at kind of cycling around, and he does those quick turns in front, and he's always got a stick on the ice and ready and solid, and he's uh, he, he, he plays that role really well. Well, it's definitely his strength, too. Mm-hmm. I mean, and like you said, this is something that, like, a lot of his production last year was from doing that, whether mm-hmm. it be – deflecting a, a shot puck or uh, picking up a rebound and just putting it home, you know, and it's, it's in recent weeks too, he's really been kind of jumping in his production. They kind of had a little bit of a slow start this season, but in the last couple of weeks, you're definitely noticing him uh, climbing the uh, point totals as far as the Colts right now. I mean, he's fifth on the team for points with four goals, 10 assists. So 
you know, it's, it's, it's a good spot for him. And if he can just keep kind of treading in that direction, he's, mm-hmm. he's just going to kind of get that momentum back. And, you know, if, if they're, they're obviously trying to work his strength into the game. And as long as, you know, they can just keep him there, he keeps plugging away there. The, the points will start coming. And again, 14 points through 19 games is nothing to sneeze at anyway. Oh, he's no. Been, he's still been very good. Yeah, and he's got three games on the top power play uh, coming up, so those are going to be big. Hopefully, he can pump in a bunch of get a bunch of points there, um, pump in a few goals. The other uh, thing is like it's kind of between him and Ben Howarchuk for that first power play. Mm -hmm. Um, They're going to be in competition for that spot, so this is kind of his chance to to kind of steal that job. So. Um, both good players. It's just uh, exact same good healthy competition, total. right? They're kind of in that same sort of spot on the team, and uh, same point total. Yeah, just exactly. One point difference. Yeah, Rose has got the extra point over two games. Obviously, with uh, Howard Chuck missing the last two games from the suspension. Um, yeah. So yeah, playing on the power play with the uh, with Zook, Cheetos, Picard, and Keen um, is going to be a big opportunity with them the next few games. Mm-hmm. Uh, also on that line, you got uh, Matei Picard. I love Matei Picard, man. Oh, like the Czech Republic forward. Just like he, I, it seems like every game he has a breakaway. Yeah. Or like a shorthanded breakaway. Yep. To be more specific, four like, short hand goals on the season, and I mean he's, they're all breakaways. I think all of them. <laughs> like, how does this happen? Like, especially like I mean, obviously other teams scout other teams, and somehow this guy's still finding breakaways. Well, like, he's so fast, and that's like, like we'll watch games, and I'll feel like we've got a better scoring chance when we're short handed than yeah. we do on the power play oh, sometimes. Yeah. Like, I mean, I'm looking here, so you've got you've got him with four short handed goals. Okay, so the most Power play goals on the Colts is like a multiple two two goal tie. Uh, Suzuki's got a pair. Picard's also got a pair. Uh, you've also got Tucker and Howard Chuck, Keen Murray. I mean, there's no one that's really running away with power play points. But meanwhile, leading all of the specialty teams' point production is Picard with four shorthanded goals. Yeah, nine goals, 20, 12 assists, uh, 21 points. So that's pretty solid. Nine goals and four of those are shorthanded. Yeah. Like, that's insane. That's crazy. You know, yeah. and, and another thing that we talked about with him, and it was something that the team had tried earlier in the season, at the start of the season, when the guys were just running away with points, when everyone was, like, projected to have, like, 250 points in, yeah. in the first two weeks, <laughs> uh, is the idea of possibly maybe going back to seeing how that top pairing of uh, Chiodo, Suzuki, and Picard would look, you know? I know mm-hmm. they're obviously trying to stretch some of this production uh, across the top six. Uh, but, you know, it's something that the team could consider, and we've discussed it a little bit here this past week about the possibility of how it might look to resort to that. And, you know, who knows? It's Right now, you know, I mean, things are looking good, and once we get Benny back, you know, that'll kind of help fill out the, the uh, offensive side of things for the Colts. Yeah, like that second line, Picard, Wilms, and Brown, they, they have had times where they've looked good, but they've – had times where the chemistry wasn't so strong. Um, yeah, I'm with you out there. I, I think it would be nice to, to load up that first line. I always I always seem to like to have that one line that's just completely loaded up. Like just we've had dominant. Colts have had some good ones over the years. The last big one, obviously, Svechnikov, uh, Luchuk, and Sokolov. And then insanity. Before that, there was uh, LeBanc, Mangiapani, and. Uh, oh, and yeah, Bland Easy, but also Justin Scott. Yeah, yeah. Before that. Yeah, so true. yeah, so um either one of those triple threats is just yeah. ridiculous because I mean Scott and Bland Easy were both just lights out in Barry, especially and, Scott towards his uh the end of his tenor in, in yeah. Barry. And I mean when you look at this lineup, the, the, they have the depth to do it, to have a top line and then not give up uh anything going down the lineup. Mm. Um Especially with the the defensive yeah. side producing as well as it has as well, you know. I mean, when you've got like Tucker in your top four for for point production, and he's just been ridiculous. Murray obviously has been great. Keane's been great. So the team has no issue as far as with guys that are able to put the puck in the net. They've just kind of 
had issues putting more pucks in the net than the opposing team in recent weeks. What's crazy is, yeah, Tyler Tucker, four goals, 13 assists, 17 points in uh, 19 games, plus nine, only four points on the power play. He's, he's not getting that top uh, that top power play time. That's crazy production, considering yeah. you're not even getting the, the first power play time. Um, oof, that's wild. That's pretty good. Yeah, and only a few guys have more than four points on the power play this season, so... Uh, I mean, obviously, uh, Chiodo, Suzuki, uh, Picard's only got four points on the man advantage. The only other guy that has more than four, you'd have to look at uh, Joey Keene there, who yeah. has two goals and five assists on the man advantage. So Yeah, Keener's quarterbacking the, the top power play unit. He's doing a good job. Uh, practice would look good, um, like firing the puck around and doing it quickly. And uh, Yeah, it's looking good. It's It's been... A struggle on the power play. I, I've noticed in the last several games, I've been to most of the last uh, four or five games. I think I've been to four of the last five games live. Um, and the power play is getting chances. They're getting the puck to the net. They're moving the puck around well. And they've just run into some hot goalies, in my opinion. Um, mm -hmm. they, they really have. Like, it's it's an easy thing to say. Um but it's the it's been the case, case. yeah. It really has, especially uh, Kyle Kaiser in uh, Oshawa. The Colts did pretty good, thirty-four shots that game, and uh, Kaiser got the shutout. Uh, that was a few games ago, four nothing uh, lost in Oshawa, and it was a lot closer than people might think. I was there at that game, um, so yeah, uh, just uh, running into some hot goalies and. That's it's gonna happen in the OHL. There's a lot of good players playing uh, between the pipes in the league. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, so then, uh, do you want to move on to the the next line? What was the the third pairing that they had? Oh, today? yeah, for sure. Uh, that, let's hit up uh, Aiden Brown here. We don't want to miss him. Actually, two goals, uh, five assists, seven points uh, in 19 games. He's been looking pretty fast and. He's passing the eye test, like I said before, with uh, with some of these other guys. He's definitely doing that for me right now. So tenacious, like he's just hammered some Everything. guys. Oh my gosh, like it's like I, I would not want to play against him yeah. if I was on the opposition. Honestly, I would be. I would make sure I was aware of at least the vicinity of where he was on the ice, yeah. especially when you have the puck. Yeah, absolutely, especially when he's in the position oh. right now where he could be playing top six minutes. I mean, you've got some skilled guys on opposing teams that now have not just like depth and scoring ability to worry about, but they have to worry about Aiden Brown like running them over. Yeah, I know. That's, and his hits are oh, hard too. Gosh, like It's just like it, it hurts me just watching them. Yeah, like we the one game we all went together <laughs> and we were right on the glass and he was just mucking guys oh, and like you brutal. just you feel for them just the brutality same, but just he's he's a vicious vicious take guy. it take it easy on the OHL Aiden holy yeah, crap man you know, they're just they're just trying to make it like everybody else but no I mean don't stop it keep running over dude, yeah you dude. Know, that's we need that's, um and, and I'm sure he'd like to have obviously more offensive production. Um, but yeah, keep uh, keep grinding away and that'll come. Another guy who's really smashing people, and we've already talked about him a little bit, it's it's impossible not to skip down to Tucker. Yeah. Like, we're not even supposed to be talking about him, and this is like the third time we've talked, the second time we've talked about him. He's just been incredible, though. It, it, Every it, it's so hard. Like, we just jump to him all the time. But anyways, his hits have been crazy huge. Um, in Guelph, I was there at that game live, and... Man, that was unbelievable. The the two hip checks he got. He did a hip check on Nate Schnarr, and it was vicious. Nate Schnarr, Schnarr went flying, and he, he actually, like, limped off the ice all the way from uh, the far blue line over towards the, the far bench. And he it took him, like, at least 25 seconds to get off the ice That's wild. from about – that distance which is crazy he was limping well you know you know that merkley was sitting there having flashbacks from the previous he, season when he got steamrolled yeah. by him so yeah. i and guess he was just thinking better somebody else than me and then uh, later in the game he got uh i don't know if i'm gonna butcher this guy's name like i did with uh, sda from peterborough i'm not even gonna try him anymore <laughs> don't even bother no last time like i just totally ruined his name but uh 
uh, Torpchenko, is that him? The, That's the forward from um, beautiful enunciation. Yeah, not bad. Eh? From Guelph, he's also a St. Louis draft pick, so I'm sure Tucker's gonna have fun with that one uh, next year when they go to like rookie camp or right. whatever development camp, and he can make fun of them for Remember that. that time I steamrolled you. <laughs> it was wild. Uh, That's what, what Tucker it, does, you know, and I mean, it's unfortunate the league doesn't track hits because yeah. It'd be oh, interesting to see I him know, and Brownie's eh? numbers. Just yeah. ridiculous, ridiculous. They get. It seems like they get at least one a shift. It's, it's well, even incredible. like even Picard. I mean, like that mm-hmm. guy's always throwing hits too. You Physical, know? Like, yeah. I mean, for a, you know, it's very similar to like uh, Sveshnikov last season. You know, where you've got a skilled player who's also just like steamrolling yeah. guys. You know, oh, for sure. Really puts opposing lines on uh, on guard when you're worried that there's the possibility that the guy is going to end up getting a shorty on you. Or just flatline, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Speaking of uh, yeah, speaking of physical guys, like, moving down to that third line, they were wearing the red jerseys today. You got Luke Bignall, who is who who does really enjoy the uh, the rough side of the game. He, he he's pretty nasty and he likes the rough stuff. So um, Luke Bignall center, was centering that line. Um, I've always really liked his speed. He he's crazy fast and his top speed and. Uh, Basically, his gliding speed, top gliding speed, is is pretty impressive. Um, what's he at for points right now? He's got uh, four goals and an assist. Yeah, so he's probably not too happy about that. Um, the production's not uh, not the greatest, but uh, but that's a player that um, that I mean, he, this the strength that he brings right now is the penalty killing. Mm-hmm. Um, I've noticed, like I, I've been writing scouting reports for Draft Pro. And the one I did recently on Bignall uh, went on and on about his penalty killing. In practice today, he was actually doing the penalty kill against the top power play. So the Colts are making sure they use him a lot in the kill. Um, he's not getting the power play minutes, so that's why the production isn't there. But, uh, but I mean... To be a good checker and to play that role, that's really vital for the team. And he's doing that real well for us. So mm-hmm. um, good job to Luke for that. Well, he's been good and he's looked good. It's just like like you said, the point production isn't necessarily reflecting that. I think one thing that would really benefit him uh, would just to be shoot more. You know, try and get some more pucks on that. He's got 17 shots right now. So, yeah, it's a little low. I mean, there. to have four goals considering he's only got 17 shots on goal. I mean, that's... That's that's pretty impressive, especially when you take into consideration that uh, Picard has nine goals on seventy shots. Yeah, twenty four percent. That's a pretty good shooting that's, percentage. That's a good number. Which and is he does pretty have similar nice to shot. his points per game average right now. So you know, yeah, and yeah, as you said, yeah, he's got a, he does have a nice shot, and I don't I don't know if maybe he's trying to to make more passes or whatever, but I think that you know he he will start getting more pucks on that. And once he does that, he's, you know, that will translate in goals. And I, the lines have been kind of jumbled lately. So, again, we go back to the trying to build chemistry can be sometimes tough when you're a little bit all over the map on where you end up being paired. Yeah, and with his speed, and uh, he's, he's also uh, got some prowess, prowess in the face-off circle. He's really good there. So Very good in the face-off um, circle. With his, with his speed and with the cool, face-offs and, and all. Face-offs, yeah. yeah, he... he, um, he they're going to want him at center, but I wouldn't mind trying him on the wing a bit. Like mm-hmm. it could be a bit of an experiment. Maybe try him with uh, Picard and Wilm sometime. Mm-hmm. Give him a chance to get some uh, offensive production. And uh, but yeah, I don't know. Depends. Oh. We'll see what the Colts want to do there. It'd just be tough because, like, like I said, I think that like he's like the number two faceoff yeah. guy. Because like. As great as Suzuki is, that's one area where, you know, some games you'll look and his numbers are not overly great. But Wilms is usually the guy that um, wins the majority of the face-offs for the team. And usually Biggie's right behind him for that. So face-offs yeah. is kind of an area where they struggle. It'd be good if, if, if with Suzuki anyways, that'd be one area that it'd be good if he could improve his game. Because if they could get that puck first after a draw, like their production would only get better, you know, if they had more... Uh, possessions after faceoffs, especially in the offensive zone. So Biggie, that's definitely one of his strengths for sure. Uh, it would be good to see him try to get a spot, like maybe in the top six, even just to see how how he does. It would definitely help yeah. his point production, but at the same time, you don't really want to thin yourself too yeah, much up exactly. the middle. You know? 
And then if someone goes up, someone has to come down. So that's kind of a tricky spot. Um, but yeah, like I, I'm liking him in that third line role and with the the success he's having on the penalty kill. Um, a pretty successful start to the year so far. But uh, but yeah, hopefully he can get some more offensive production rolling with his line mates right now who are Sam Rhodes and Riley Piercy. So Riley Piercy, the right winger, um, right winger shoots left. He's back from U17 where he played for Canada White. So his team in the round robin had uh, two wins and one overtime win. So they actually were undefeated in the round robin. Unfortunately, lost to the quarterfinals. But I caught a couple games and Piercy looked good. He was uh, he was really physical like he normally is. Another physical Colt. Imagine mm-hmm. that, eh? Yeah, right. And uh, he was pretty solid. Like I, I don't know. I didn't get any points, but uh, but he played well and he did a good job for for the team. I, I noticed his line. They drew some penalties a couple times. I think, well, more than a couple. I think it was at least three or four in the two games that I was watching. So that's quite a few penalties to draw. Um, and they they basically were like 10 seconds into a shift and he had to go off. So, I mean, getting no points, it's no doubt there. Like you earn a power play and you don't get to play it. Um, that's just how Hockey Canada was running it. They, they, they have their program and their way of doing things and which is fine. So good experience for him to be even in that tournament, the U-17, uh, play for Canada White, real solid player. Um, It'll be great to see him when he comes back, uh, obviously. Yeah. Uh, being able to establish some confidence after playing with so many different skilled players, you know. And he's yeah. been good with the Colts. He's got five <clears throat> points still through 15 games he's right now. got a goal in there, yeah. Goal, four assists. Um, and again, they, the, and they, they usually do come back a lot more confident after that tournament. Um, you notice the rookies, um, a lot of times at the start of the year, there's a little bit of deer in headlights. Like it's a big jump to the OHL from minor midget triple a and across the league. I noticed that, uh, once these guys come back from this tournament, they always come back a lot more confident and the production starts to go up and, uh, get a little more comfortable on the ice in the OHL. And it was a tough situation too, because I mean, when at the start of the season, I mean, they were pretty much, it was the three rookies on that pair, right? So I yeah. mean, you've got three guys who are in very, like they were line. good. They had a lot of speed and they were, you know, yeah. considering they were all rookies, they, they looked well. It's just kind of a tough spot to put uh, rookies into, you know, I mean, it's, yeah, they, they made it work as good as they could. And they could end up back together like, the situation with the Colts right now, Howard Chuck's out. Um, they're probably looking to bring in a forward. We're not going to get into that right now because then we'll go off topic, but we're going to get into that a little bit later. Um, they could end up back together, and that is a pretty solid line. So uh, we'll see what they decide to do. Then at the same token, he's another he's another guy that you could consider moving up to that uh, second line. Mm-hmm. Um it just depends how you want to do things, and uh, we'll see. We'll see what they do with Piercy. Right now, he's the highest on the depth chart for rookies, um, playing on the third line uh, with uh, Big Nolan Rhodes, Sam Rhodes. So, what has he got? Four goals and two assists, six points in nineteen games. Two of those goals were really nice. Uh, bat in the puck out of the air, mm-hmm. really nice, like yeah. hand-eye coordination. Um, so yeah, Sam Rhodes has been okay for the Colts this year. Uh, hoping maybe for a little bit more out of him, but, uh, but we'll see as the season goes on. Um, so yeah, fourth line, you're looking at, uh, Peter Fleming and Tyson Forster on the right wing. So Fleming at center, Forster on the right wing. Forster has been amazing. I, I've always been a big Tyson Forster fan. Uh, when I saw him in the OHL Cup last year, it, it was incredible in his OHL draft year, uh, playing for the Barry Junior Colts. I couldn't believe he fell to the third round. Um, really surprised that he didn't get an invite to the U17 challenge there. I, I think he was definitely deserving of that, and I think he's a guy that's been underrated through his in, through this OHL draft process into the and his time coming into the OHL. So. No, and I mean, and he leads the uh, the team in, in uh, points for rookies. So, I mean, two goals, four assists. Uh, yeah, and he got a really nice goal on blog night there. We yeah. Had, uh, the blog got together, and we sat the uh, first row behind the behind the net there, and 
uh, Forrester got a real nice snipe. It was a two on one. He capped it and put it top corner. So we got some pretty funny pictures actually of us when we were at the game because uh, we had uh, our buddy from uh, Cheap Seats Productions who was uh, there taking shots for the blog. And there was the one moment during the game where uh, Murray went at uh, Curtis Douglas, <laughs> yeah. former teammate, all six foot eight of them, and and Dougie was upset, and all of us were just kind of you know because we we're all big Douglas fans. We really like him a lot when he was in Barry. You know, it was it was tough seeing him go, but he was heated, man. He was just he wanted a piece of Murray, something bad. And there was one shot in particular that he got where just. Dougie looks so mad. <laughs> it was like the three of us. And we all just <laughs> big grins on our face. Murray, We're just egging him on. And... Murray's just no holds barred though. Like he's just like he's just like he's a he's just a tough player. I'll headlock this tree. No big deal. Oh, you know, he, he just went right at he's him. He's a tough Oh. Tough customer, Justin Murray, the captain of the Colts, one of my uh, one of my favorite Colts ever. Awesome guy. Well, you, you like to see, especially when you got a big guy like that looming over your goalie, you know, and to see, to see uh, Murray go in and just put it to the headlock. Yeah. From the it was glorious. What's Murray's point production at? you got to scroll up for Murray's him. five goals and seven assists. 12 points in 18 games yeah. with uh, a plus nine rating. That's pretty good. Yeah. Five goals, solid. 30 shots. Wow. That's very good. Yeah, no, Murray's been really solid for the Colts. Um, yeah, and he's another guy. He's physical. A lot of what he does is he, he's great at containing uh, guys on the outside. And, like, it's really hard to get by him. And he's good at his own zone. Uh, physical, gets after guys, like, puts a body on him, puts a stick on him. Mm -hmm. uh, doesn't make life very easy for uh, opposing forwards. And uh, yeah, speaking of that, like Murray, where's the like the NHL? Like, wh what's up with you guys? Like NHL scouts, are we noticing this? Or? I think it'll be a situation where, as the season progresses, <laughs> we'll see a lot more people paying more Jeez. attention to, them. especially like, what are you gonna do in production. You know, and this happens sometimes where guys just don't get noticed. You know, like yeah. the name that we mentioned earlier with Justin Scott, for example. Exactly. You know, like yeah. that guy was money. Like especially in like his, his last season, especially in Barry, he was just lights out. You know, but like I mean, you're looking at a guy undrafted. And then it wasn't until his OA season when just late in the season he ended up getting signed by uh, Columbus. Mm -hmm. um, so that was obviously a good situation for him. Yeah, Barry's always had a good development program. Like guys tend to, uh, in that last year, there's a lot of players over the years that have earned contracts, mm -hmm. uh, especially in the last like five to seven years. And you're seeing all those guys in the a AHL right now. Um, so like in the American Hockey League, not, not kind of – doing whatever they're doing there some of them are doing well some of them not so well but we'll see like uh, there's going to be a bunch of them that end up making it to the nhl so well even with like joseph blandisi who was originally drafted by colorado i believe uh and then they just ended up not doing anything or signing him or anything right and then in his oa season he ended up getting a deal with uh the new jersey devils yeah. before he ended up eventually getting uh sent to to Anaheim uh, with the 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 might just the Ducks I think now I don't think they consider them <laughs> they're not the mighty ducks. yeah they're not mighty anymore uh, they're just the Ducks yeah. so uh, but That's yeah nice. it's just another example of a guy who though he was drafted they ended up just kind of passing on him but he's still with a, a very strong away season he ended up getting eyes on him and having a situation where you've got scouts already coming out to watch like Ryan Suzuki, for example. Yeah, there's going to be a it, lot. There's going to be a lot of people there. So it really opens up opportunities for guys like that to, to step up and get eyes on them, you know? Yeah, another one there, Lucas Chioto. We talked about him a lot. Loaded with skill. Oh, he was um, outstanding when he was with the uh, Columbus camp there. In today's NHL, I don't think the size is um, an issue. He should probably be considered for a job like 29 points in 19 games so well, you know, anyways, unfortunately like it, it's not we're as gonna bad keep as pushing for these guys but even like Mangiapane I mean he's still like I've heard that he's you know pretty much the next person to go down he'll be the the one of the first ones <sighs> called up but I mean I mean you still can't go to a Colts game without seeing like a hundred kids wearing Mangiapane jerseys I don't know what he's got to do for Calgary to like give him a real chance because he is, he's been the best player in the AHL for uh, for Abbotsford. And, oh, man, it's like – or no, it's, it's Stockholm. Stockholm. And 
Yeah. yeah. No. Whatever it is. It is <laughs> the Flames is minor hockey uh, team. The baby Flames. Yeah, the baby Flames. So, uh, I don't know what he's got to do for Calgary. They just they seem to be one of those organizations that's not run overly well every year. Seem to miss the playoffs every season. Well, there's a struggle even for uh, the Ottawa Sanderson Sanders. And, uh, to get a spot there. You know yeah. What I mean? He's looked really good for them too so it, it's just you know i mean calgary's calgary calgary yeah. gonna calgary yeah calgary gonna calgary ottawa gonna ottawa that oh, uh, five minute ottawa. uber video was ridiculous my goodness I was matt duchene <laughs> was on fire but then you see the the, the uber driver he posted <laughs> he's like, oh, he's like, i was in my right mind and it came out that he said that he was drunk essentially oh, when he uploaded man. it like how in the world does this happen i mean it's a situation where you know like a lot of uh a lot of people probably in teams complain about coaching staff went out and about together. They just unfortunately were in a situation yeah. where they were in an Uber with a, uh, with a rogue driver. That <laughs> guy's kamikaze that mission. guy is in some serious trouble. Uber is going to make a total example out of him. So well, they're probably just going to take a he, left from he now. He probably on. deserves it, but I mean, I, I I show compassion, but that was pretty rough. It was a uh, it was unfortunate, you know. Like I mean, it's the only thing that really reflected bad is when you like your players are talking about not paying attention to coaches at practice, yeah. and you're like, oh, oh it's just man. a bad luck. In, but like, despite all of that, as just a hockey fan and mm. scout and whatever I am I, I just love to yeah. oh no, it's great. It was it's entertaining it was it's entertaining, so entertaining. Sure. um yeah so where are we here we've been going all over the place we get caught up in uh we lose our structure when we start talking about Tucker and Murray we just it's like hard to, well I mean you just can't those D you can't talk without having some reason to bring them up they're they're, they're yeah they were yeah exactly they were running the second power play in practice I'm sure Tucker with 17 points is like what gives here. Like, when am I going to get my chance? But you got Joey Keane, who's like incredible. So that's good to have lots of good D and lots of options there. No, no, absolutely. And um, so these continue to not work. You've got good backup plans to try out to see if you can make those work, right? Yeah, for sure. And then the gray line. Oh, we actually started with the gray line. We ended up away from them. Uh, so, yeah, we've already talked about Tyson Forrester. Uh, Peter Fleming's been pretty decent so far this year. I thought he looked best when he was on the the all rookie line. Um, he looked good centering that line. Uh, young rookie player, not doing a crazy two amount. Goals, two two goals, two assists, four points. But he's uh, he's holding it down at plus two, so that's solid. You can't ask for too much more there. Don't want him to be in the minus column uh, for the plus minus. Not doing anything crazy for me, but a uh, pretty solid player. I mean, 25% shots, like uh, two goals on yeah, eight pretty shots good. total. Like, it's just another situation, kind of like with Biggie, where, you know, if they can find ways just to generate more shots, it's, I think that's a big thing. I mean, a lot of our shots are coming from, like, our top four guys. And then after that, it kind of just, like, it spreads out a little bit. Yeah, for um, me so far, the top rookie is Tyson Forrester. Yeah, I agree. Um, he looks really good and he practiced today. Oh, my gosh. He like he made some real nice deeks and put some shots up in the top corner and he scored a lot of goals. I know it's just practice, but he's looking real good and he's confident. Well, the like team I obviously seen, has confidence. He's got the most games of the rookies too, so it's whenever I see Tyson Forrester walking around, he's like he's got his chest puffed out. Like he's a very confident young man and good on him. Like he's a great hockey player. So keep it up, buddy. Um, no, absolutely. And then on left wing, you got Victor Hadfield. Uh, Hadfield. Hasn't recorded any points, hasn't recorded any points for the Colts ever, so hopefully he gets on the board sometime soon. Um, 40 games. Yeah, so, and then I guess you got in yellow jerseys, you got the D. We've talked a lot about Tucker. Uh, we've talked a lot about Murray, Keener. Um, probably not quite the production he'd want uh, so far this year, but not bad. He started off really good. It's kind of slowed down here in recent weeks. He was like in the top five, I think, at the uh, like earlier on in the season. But as things have kind of gone on, he's he's what seventh now for points. Yeah, he's he's a guy like he's just got the tools, man. Like he's just so fast and incredible. Like we've talked about Joy Keane before, uh, New York Rangers third round pick. Great player. Um, yeah, hope, hopefully he can uh, step it up and put some more points on the board. Um, who else do we got? Chris Cameron. I went to the game in Guelph and I was walking through the hall and he was doing like, someone was doing jump rope and, uh, with like a Colts, with Colts gear on. And I was just like, kind of cut sleeves and I was just like, 
who the heck is that guy? He's like just a monster. Yeah, like he's a big just, dude. He's like huge, man. I couldn't believe how big he is. Um, and talk about another guy that's physical. Yeah. Like guys don't won't even go near him because he just crushed. Well, he's a big boy. Like, he's sad. Just <laughs> that hurts. Is. Yeah, he's looked good though. Like I mean, for the most part, he's he's got what three assists on the season, um, nineteen games. So it, it's and then he's holding the zero rating, which is solid. Like you, 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 you want to see a player like that at least in the uh, in the zero or in the plus area. So that's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you got the other two draft eligible D, Nate Allenson and Matt Hill. Um, I don't know what do we got here. For, Hill's got an assist. Hill's got an assist. Allison's one goal, up. five assists, six points in eighteen games. Um, yeah, like good, really good players. Players we really liked in the summer. Uh, we talked them up a lot this summer. Uh, basically, their skating ability and whatnot, but not quite getting her done as much as we would have hoped so far this season. So hopefully, those two guys step up. No, absolutely. And I, I feel like it's it, it can happen anytime. Uh, hopefully just like once we get kind of the roster a little bit more solidified, uh, getting Howard Chuck back is going to be a big thing for them. Yeah, and, I, I feel uh, like just uh, basically a full roster would help. Yeah, a full roster would help. Uh, um, that's our next topic. So I was at the game in Guelph and... I look at this like I was in the media room because I'm doing some scouting for draft pro hockey right now, and I look at the board and there's an X there. So basically, uh, on the on on one of the forward spots there's an X, and then Hadfield is in the other spot, and it's like so basically we only had ten out of twelve forwards in the lineup. Mm-hmm. Um, I understand Harchuk was suspended. And Piercy was at U17, but those are the only two guys that are away. So it's like you got to expect that any given time you're going to have two forwards out of the lineup, maybe. Because yeah, totally. that's totally normal. You could even have more. Yeah. Like, what if another guy got hurt or two go- two more guys got hurt? Mm-hmm. Well, these guys aren't even hurt. They're just suspended in at tournaments. But mm-hmm. what if you also had two injuries there? You'd be down to, what, eight forwards? Yeah. I mean... You wouldn't even have enough for, for three lines... I'm not really sure what's going on with the roster. Um, what do you? What are your thoughts on that? I mean, it, it's a tough situation, especially when you're like moving defenders um, up to the forward spot. I mean, throwing Hadfield up, who you know, as we mentioned already, is not Strong registered point. a point, and you know, think expecting um, him to kind of stray away from where he he plays. And expecting a different result from him in an entirely different position. I don't know if they're just trying to. Yeah, and especially with a struggling player, like that's uh, that's kind of a tricky spot to be in. Uh, I'm not going to put his situation on Colts management. He seems to be uh, struggling a bit, but uh, but yeah, like just not not having enough forwards is um, that's huge. It's huge. It's yeah. huge. Um, and I mean, you just let go of Connor LePage. So he only got one game with the Colts and ends up getting cut. Uh, goes through the waiver. I don't know how he passed through OHL waivers. This kid's a 2001 born player, late birthday. So he's essentially a 2002 uh, player. So that's what, five years of eligibility. Mm-hmm. And goes to the Gatineau Olympics. They give him number 96, first of all. So obviously they, they they have some sort of faith in him and believe in him, and three goals in three games to start. Yeah. And all, our rookie forwards have five goals in fifty games. Fifty games. I mean, yeah. Do you, you think he could like if you're short forwards? I think maybe we should have found a spot for him. Well, you know what I mean. He played what one game with the team. Yeah. It kind of seems like a pretty small sample size, considering sometimes the benefit of the doubt that the team does give for other players. You know, like what I don't know if there was like anything else that just we don't know about that kind of attributed Behind to the that scenes, situation. Because yeah. you never know with some of these guys. But and, at the same time, like I, I've right. never heard anything bad at the same time. So in a lot of the times where it's a situation where like a player is difficult, you usually hear rumblings of it. And I never got that impression with him. Right. I just assumed no. it was a situation where they kind of had maybe more faith in some of the other rookies that were there. But for him to to get the one game 
end up getting passed on to go to the queue and to put up three goals in three games. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got to kind of wonder why nothing else was done with him here. Yeah, that's a player that we pumped up a lot. I was really excited about him after seeing him in the summer. I liked him a lot in minor midget uh, in his OHL draft year. He was really good at camp, got a lot of points at camp. Um, So we were excited to see him, and he only got one game. Um, but yeah, like you never know. We make, we're making assumptions here. So I don't want to be too hard on Colts management. Like we, we love Jason Ford and Rob Stewart and Dale Howarchuk. They're all He's doing done such a great job, an amazing you know? job. Um, it, it, maybe there's players coming in, like maybe they're in the works with guys and they only feel like they have so many cards. Mm-hmm. Um, if that's the case, that would be great. Uh, you got to think that something's going to give and there's going to be a signing for the Colts in the near future because this just doesn't it doesn't seem to be like a situation that makes a lot of sense being short forwards on the roster. For as long as we have been, too. Like, we're not talking about, like, this just being the last two games, you know. Like, this is something yeah. that's been going on for at least a couple weeks now. And, you and know, on a, losing streak. a lot of these games, you know, it's been in the third period where we've kind of where the games have kind of fallen apart for the team and yeah. where they've ended up losing them. So it's really tough to expect uh, 10 forwards to maintain a full 60 minutes of hockey and to be energetic throughout that entire time frame when, you know, like a lot of these guys are getting either double shifted or playing longer shifts to make up for the missing spots, you know? So it, it's, it's a tough spot for the players, and especially when you're like in a spot where you're throwing defensemen into the the mix up front. You know, like we're not really in a position <laughs> that we could be, you know, just you know, like the team needs to get some wins. Like we've said, these haven't been big losses. These have been games that the team could have easily won for the most part. Uh, you got to think though that obviously energy levels are much lower, having to kind of stretch out uh, your ice time. And there's, there's, you just got to hope that there's something that we just don't know about. Yeah, exactly. In terms of, like, there's been some rumors of a Colts uh, impending player signing. But uh, we're going to a little bit later. Like, right now, I'm just, I was looking at the uh, Olympic, the Gatineau Olympics, Les Olympiques. How do you like that? That was beautiful. Oh, beautiful. Everyone's swooning G- in our listening G- list. Giordano Fenoro is also there. Yeah. Nine yeah. points for them. Just so lighting the Colts, it up. Are the Colts like a feeder system for the Gatineau Olympic? Yep. Yeah, I mean, we're just helping the queue out. Yeah. You know? I mean, I don't know what's going on there. But anyways, um, so yeah, that uh, brings us where are we at here. It brings us to goalies. Um, so yeah, the first goalie we got is... Kai Edmonds. Um, uh, we got we got a few kind of theories on what's going on here. So, uh, like what we've said before is we don't like the the three goalie system. We it's were not, very clear about that. But not we were, ideal. We were, uh, and I mean, not to toot our own horns, but it, it's 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 playing out. It's kind of playing out as we'd anticipated. They should have traded one. They should have traded one. You know, and I mean, it would have been better for the team. It would have been better for the players. And the value was higher back then. Cause well, he, Kai was great last season. You know, like, I yeah. mean, for the most part, he looked really, really good. You know what I mean? I'm not going to say that, you know, like, I've always liked Kai. But, you know, like, last year, you know, he, he definitely was better than even I'd anticipated that he would have been in his games. You know, but then to come into this season after getting a, a good amount of games last season to just kind of be in the mix... You know, uh, especially when you you take into consideration that Zukov has been has been great. Mm-hmm. Uh, Greaves has been incredible, incredible, like even outstanding. Yeah. I mean, Kai Edmonds, three eighty eight goals against average, uh, eight eighty two save percentage. Uh, not really the the start he was looking for. He he was getting games at the start of the year. Uh, now he's been kind of in the press box, so. It, he he kind of had a he had a short leash going into the season, um, being the the only returning goalie on the team. Uh, mm-hmm. It was probably hard for him, and uh, five games to prove himself, which isn't a big sample size. So those numbers, like you look at that, take it with a grain of salt because it's only five games. Well, it's tough for him too because you figure in a lot of these cases he's gotten a game or two games and then he's sitting for two weeks. Right. And then all of a sudden he's thrown back in. Like you can – 
And that's what we said originally when we said the three goalie thing cannot work. You don't get is full that reps when in practice. you're playing like a lot of these past few weeks, most of these weeks yeah. we've only played two games. Yeah. You know, I think we've only had like one three game week in the last like four or five weeks. So I mean that does not leave a chance for any goalie that like I mean obviously Zukov has gotten the the majority of the games playing more than half of them this season. And I mean, rightfully so. Zukov has been he's been great. Uh and Greaves has been I mean, just lights out. Greaves has looked so good. So good. Yeah, Zukov so Zukov's got a three point zero eight goals against average, nine oh eight save percentage, six and five on the year. Uh really solid. Vegas Golden Knights fourth round pick. Um really like this player. It's a big, strong, like big solid goalie, like I, I don't know what it is about me. I, I've always liked the bigger goalies. It just kind of gives me a little more comfort. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he's a he's 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 a pretty he's pretty solid with the positioning. He definitely takes the bottom of the net away, and he likes to block most of the net. Mm-hmm. And his style is a lot different from Jack Greaves, who he plays a lot different. He likes to kind of. Uh, stand up tall, make himself as big as possible because he's not quite. He doesn't big. have that same frame, so he kind no. of, you know. Whereas, like where where Zukov can kind of just cover that low part of the net down, and yeah. still cover a large, but and like Zukov for a big guy, his his like lateral movement, his ability, yeah. to kind of, like he's especially when we were watching on on blog night, like watching him up close, like where our position was uh, yeah, for the two good. periods. He's just so good and he's so quick. He's easily like at this point point in time he's the he's the best goalie on the Colts so he's going to get the lion's share of starts going forward mm-hmm. uh Jack Greaves though has been really solid he's a draft eligible this year so I actually was in Guelph um I was lucky I got to sit in the press box there for that game that was pretty sweet uh, working with draft pro so um I got a really good view of his game and um Gosh, like yeah, it's just I, I I think he's really a player that is severely underrated for the NHL draft. He's been underrated the whole time. Uh, the Colts took him in the third round a couple years back of the OHL draft, and he didn't get a sniff at anything with Hockey Canada yet. Like I, it, it's got to be because of the size, because Hockey Canada tends to covet those large goalies. Like if you look at the U17 tournament. The goalies were huge. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, totally. <laughs> well, it's you like, know what? And that's the standard right now. Yeah. Even uh, I can't remember exactly when it was, but uh, I talked to a few like NHL scouts at a Colts game late last season, and a lot of them were saying to me, like, unless a goalie is absolutely elite, if he's under six four, most teams won't even look at them. And Jack Greaves is six foot tall, and he could be still growing. He's a young kid, so it's like, I don't know. I, he's a uh, He's not like he's small. Like we've had smaller goalies. What was Leo Lazarev? He was definitely not six he feet tall. No, no, no. <laughs> so yeah, he's he's not tiny, but he he makes himself bigger in the net. He doesn't go down easy. Um, I got lots of notes on him from the game in Guelph. Uh, gave him a pretty glowing review. Like he got four goals scored on him, but uh, but one of them was a lucky bounce. And then the other three were like quick pass one timers were just hammered in the net, and it was like you, I don't think you can fault him on any of those goals. Like it would have to have been a pretty incredible, credible save to stop any of those pucks. And he's um, made big saves in key moments of games as well. So I mean, like he looks confident. He oh, looks he's good. Good. Like remember that save? He made a crazy good save on uh, uh, Andreas Athanasiu. At uh, Barry Colts camp, where he like came flying across and uh, and and not a bad guy to rob. Yeah. So yeah, Jack Jack Reeves is good. Um, Pumped about him. He's probably going to be the one uh, backing up Zukov, and you could see him stealing lots of starts as as we go forward. Be interesting with the numbers he's got so far. Um, Numbers took a bit of a hit in Guelph. Two point seven eight. Seven goals against and nine thirteen save percentage, pretty good for mm-hmm. for a for a seventeen year old kid. Absolutely, for sure. Um, yeah, so that pretty much goes through the whole lineup. Um, pretty in depth, a lot more I think than we'd anticipated. Man, must be like on like two we hours are creeping already. on an hour already. Oh. We passed the hour, so oh yeah, gosh. it's not too too bad. All right, so we're just gonna bore you with uh, some more stuff. Um, let's just lighten it up a little bit, like. 
what were the Barry Colts up to in Guelph? Like, when they were warming up, they were yelping like a bunch of hyenas through the mall. Yeah, just it was hilarious. I wish I had like a video of it. It was great. Like they're just having so much fun. Um, it's great gosh, Barry it. Colt's gonna be Barry Colts. Like yeah. we always got like a rowdy group. Yeah. And speaking of rowdy, two hundred and ninety one pims. Yeah. Yeah. What is up with that? Like the next highest in the league is two hundred and fifty three. And that's all of it too. Ottawa's like, but I mean, they're at least able to kind of get away with it with their 17 wins on the season. Uh, we have nine. So, they, you know, I mean, they've played, they've played three more games. It's not but, like we've had an overly crazy amount of fights. Like, there's been fights, but it's a lot of minor penalties. And, I mean, I'm, I'm not too sure what's going Tucker on Tucker and Keane have taken a good chunk of the, uh, the overall yeah. units on the team. Uh, Keen's what thirty four, I think. Yeah, Keen's got thirty four. Tucker's got thirty six. Picard's got twenty eight. So, uh, but Picard, like with him again, I mean, obviously, guys should try not to take penalties, but I think we kind of anticipated that. Yeah, he had that style where you know, with that great uh, annoying rat comment that he made at uh, <laughs> Buffalo Sabres camp during that interview. Yeah, I, you know, and that's just the style of game that he plays. You know, and obviously with Tux. Tux runs over everything, so you're gonna when you make big hits, whether they're dirty or not. A lot of times you get called for them anyway, right? Because I don't know, it was like a preventative measure to prevent everyone from dropping their gloves and fighting or what. But uh, I mean, the team definitely, and I mean, I don't even know if we can really complain about it at this point. At, at some point, we're just gonna either. get conditioned to. Well, I mean, the teams had the most penalty minutes for the last <laughs> however many years. That's true. Uh, this is not it's, anything new. It's not a small sample this size. Is not a small sample size. This is a <laughs> reoccurring from roster to roster thing. It just, uh, you know, and it might just be the way the coaching they, style. Absolutely, and I power mean, check doesn't mind you know, them being and Benny has always been an aggressive guy so I mean obviously that's been bestowed upon him yeah. from his dad and well he like he hacked a guy in Oshawa and, and uh, the guy went down he got a penalty and was arguing it and I was just like what <laughs> would you not think that's a penalty and then Picard are you away Benny Picard, Fight for your, uh... Picard took one in Guelph that was a lot worse. Like that, that roughing call was wasn't the greatest. Like most of his penalties are good. Um, not gonna harp on them, but that was one you can't have. With like ten minutes left in the third period, uh, Guelph scored on that power play. So I mean, just being shorthanded too often, and I'm not gonna pin it on any specific players. It's the whole team. It's been the whole team. And I, like I was talking, I, I saw Nate Allenson's dad after the game and. Like, all he said to me was that the Colts are taking too many penalties. That was his only comments he had. And we've had other uh, Colts players, parents and dads and stuff telling hey, us Rob, the same thing. Like Rob, Rob messaged the same thing. Yeah, yes. Rob Suzuki. I mean. Yeah, I was talking to him the other day, and he'd mentioned, uh, I didn't actually look at the stats, but one of the things he said to me, and this is a couple games ago, so I don't know if this has varied since then, but he said that the Colts have killed off more penalties than 16 other NHL te- or 16 other OHL teams had taken at that point. Oh my gosh, season. and thank God they have a good penalty kill. Like, like we're working Luke Bignall a little too hard here. <laughs> Give no. the guy a break. But but I mean, you got a lot of good penalty killers. Like Matej Picard is incredible short or uh, on the penalty kill. Like he, and the team does have the he's six got the pass. four shorthanded goals and totally. But he's he's killing them off pretty good. And the big thing is, is I mean, they do have an eighty-two point seven percent success rate on the power or the penalty kill, which is sixth best in the OHL right now. But when you take into consideration that they've T- they've been shorthanded 98 times. Oh my god! And the team with the best power or the best penalty kill is the London Knights, who are at 90.5%, but they've only been shorthanded 63 times. Right. And I mean, if you want to put that into perspective, um, 98 times shorthanded, the lowest on the league is 55. Uh, it's Kitchener Rangers. Another team has 58. Well, the big thing, um, I would say the best comparison would be with Ottawa, right? Because Ottawa's got the second most power plays, or penalty but, kills, sorry. Yeah. And they've they've got a 79.1% success rate, which has them in 15th. I just don't understand how we can have such a, like, 98 to 55. So we've had 33 more kills than 
another team so far this year. I don't even understand how that's possible. It's like wild. it's not even that far into the year at all. <laughs> at all. We're just running away with it. Yeah. You know. Anyways, let's stop taking so many penalties, but keep aggressive at the same that's time. Not which is happen. like, what is that an oxymoron? Like, how do you do both? It's tough. Yeah. It's tough. You know what it's I mean? It's one of those situations where you, you want to tell guys to calm down, but at the same time, you, you don't, don't want, want them to, get to stop. Head yeah, and exactly. Because yeah. right? that happens with guys. Yeah. So, so, so yeah. Anyways. So what, what are we want? on next here? So, um, so we've kind of gone through recent results. Uh, so next, to further our point on the, basically the depth at forward, um, and just not quite having a full roster at forward uh, during the last several games. There was a pretty significant rumor that dropped last night on Twitter. Yeah, the, with uh, the uh, the NA Central Scouting, uh, which is Mark Seidel. That runs on if I said it right. I'm all about butchering names. <laughs> I, I had... Uh, I got Seidel, some, Seidel. some friendly messages about know. my way of saying uh, uh, Picar when we went from Picar to, to Picash to uh, Picar again. We have okay, Daryl from Games who we, messaged me after the last podcast, yeah. <laughs> and he kindly told me that it was Picar. I'm like, but if you go to Elite Prospects, they insist that it's because they've got that little enunciation thing that tells you how to say names, and they say Picash, but I can't possibly Darryl, so. be Picash. I mean, I'm not going to pretend to understand the... <laughs> I have enough trouble with how English possibly be? to try and uh, figure out how... Uh, Other languages uh, work. Yeah. Republic you know what's funny is, said. like, I was watching um, the Five Nations tournament for U18 was in the Czech Republic, and I was video scouting it for Draft Pro. And it was incredible listening to the Czech Republic uh, enunciation. I was, like, it was, it was all in Czech, um, the commentary. And I was listening to it basically to get the names as it was going. Um, I did have like the numbers of the players, but it helps to kind of hear the name as, as the play is going on. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, it was ridiculous. It was like, blah, 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 Jack Hughes, blah, 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 Jack Hughes. And it was like, it was kind of funny because Jack Hughes absolutely lit that up. 16 points in four games. But yeah, anyways, that's just a little side note. But so, so as far as the teaser that we were discussing from the uh, from the, Mark Seidel, yeah, uh, he basically tweeted what was yeah late in the six o'clock yesterday. Uh, the tweet basically just said, uh, "I can't give out all of the details, uh, but fans and Barry should expect a big boost to their lineup in the near future. He's a former draft pick that's decide uh, that's decided to leave the USA and come play for the remarkable coach. Remarkable, coach. remarkable coach. Remarkable coach. Uh, pretty good hockey player too, Dale Howardchuk. Uh, it's a messy uh, tangle, but it will get worked out. <laughs> it it'll get worked. It'll. So obviously, you look under it. I mean, I'm the first person there with my McBain uh, image from The Simpsons um, and numerous other people. I mean, everyone I think immediately assumed that it would be McBain. Uh, and then I was it you who did he Jack, like I swear to god Jack McBain has broke my heart worse than like high school girlfriends. Yeah. It's well, just and that's the general <laughs> consensus. Like everybody, you go through the comments, and everyone's initial thought was it was it was it was Jack McGee. Yeah, and like uh, Gene I, Pereira was one of the people. Yeah, who we got also. It. Yeah, Gene Pereira did it. Uh, Eric Pincala, uh, Mark Weigel, um, all of us. We even had a uh, yeah Ryan Staples M, Ryan was, N, Justin Stapleton. You know, Trevor was uh, all over it as well. Trevor from Twitter. Yeah, yeah, Trevor O'Hara. So, uh, I don't know. Apparently, it's not Jack McBain, though. Um, so, we've been digging into this one, and we've been kind of banging our heads against the, a brick wall to kind of figure it out. Um, I've heard rumors that Barry could be acquire, acquiring Eric uh, Cicilline, uh from – He's a, from the Toronto Junior Canadiens Junior A, so 14 goals, 22 assists, 36 points in 22 games. He's from Guelph. I don't know uh, how much legs that rumor has, but that's one that uh, someone DM'd me. Um, another one is uh, from OHL Insiders. He's thinking it could be D. Uh, Gian Franco Casaro. 
He's a UMass Amherst commit from Ontario, 1999 born uh, defenseman, actually. Uh, 10 points in 14 games for the Youngstown Phantoms of the USHL. And from there, I mean, I was looking at the OHL draft picks in the past, and there isn't a lot there from the states that would be playing in the U.S. that um, I thought would be a significant boost to the team. I don't think a significant boost to the team is a 2018 OHL draft pick. There's a bunch of American players that I really like there. I don't see how it's one of them, but it could be. It could be somebody like Nate Hanley, uh, Ryan Beck, um, Matt Sredel, or um, uh, another defenseman there. I don't think it would be a defenseman, anyways. You think it'd be a forward, especially um, with the lacking uh, people to. Yeah, that's why I was a little surprised when the OHL Insiders account, which is he's actually had a pretty good uh, he or she, I should say, I shouldn't, uh, I should be gender neutral, um, has had a pretty good history with uh, with predicting things like that, um, but he's also been wrong a lot too. So, um, so yeah, it's it, who knows? It could be Casaro, it could be Cicilline. Uh, or Ciccolini, or however you it want could to be it. nobody. <laughs> it could be it could nobody. Be nobody. It could be nobody. I think that the only uh, again, we'll quote messy tangle here might be just trying to decipher what this tweet meant. It would have been nice to get a little bit more information on that, but you know, and I mean, head, when when yeah. Gene is kind of scratching his head, yeah, exactly. you know that the legends, yeah, like I mean, if he doesn't kind of have an idea as to exactly, you know, like. Again, general consensus consensus was Jack McBain. And, and the way it read, that was what it I don't see who else it could have been based on reading it, you know. So, who knows? I don't even know if they know. We'll find I, out. I, I, I pretty much fell out of my couch when I saw that tweet. I thought it was Jack McBain for I sure. I was so excited. Um, but, yeah, he's a uh, – anyways, good luck to Jack McBain with his uh, career. He's with uh, – Come to Barry. Yeah, come to bed. <laughs> um, okay, so come to bed. What else do we got here? That's pretty much it. I mean, we can preview the next uh, the next uh, little while here. Um, tomorrow morning at ten thirty a.m. a.m. The Colts are playing the Hamilton Bulldogs. That'll be, be interesting. That'll be a good one. Uh, yeah, so that's a matchup of the two tr- top draft eligible forwards in the OHL, Arthur Kaliev and Ryan Suzuki. Kaliev, I, I don't have his numbers up right now, but he's a goal scoring machine. He led uh, this draft class of forwards in the OHL in goals last year, and uh, he's leading again. He's uh, He puts a puck in the net, so that should be interesting. I'm going down to the game. Uh, going to work the game for draft pro t- tomorrow morning. So that should be a good one to see, uh, to get a, to get a good look at Arthur Kaliev. Um, and then I guess the Thursday, the 15th, we got North Bay and Saturday, the 17th, the Kitchener Rangers. And it'll be unfamiliar territory for the team because they will actually be at BMC for a couple games in a row. Oh, wow. The team has not been playing very many games in the past few weeks at home. So yeah. this kind of ends a really, really long stretch that they had, uh, which, I mean, you know, it, it's not – Terrible to get a lot of those games out of the way. It's also good with uh, trying to get the team to uh, uh, kind of build uh, chemistry with one another, obviously being on the road with one another, uh, which I got a chance to, uh, last week to, to talk to a couple of the guys. And we won't tease that too, too much. But uh, the general consensus was they've kind of enjoyed the road games because they have been able to work kind of on team bonding. So, um, you know, hopefully getting some games at home. Uh, tickets, buy tickets, go Thursday, go Saturday. I know we're all going to be at the Saturday game. Uh, and just go out there and support the team. Go scream, go yell, go. Yeah, lots going on uh, with the Very Berry Colts blog. Uh, Ryan's been working really hard. Um, I've been kind of been slacking off a little bit, <laughs> but, uh, Ryan's been stretching yourself out, bud. You just, you got a lot of stuff. Yeah. I got a lot. With, I got uh, a lot on the scouting go. and stuff. So it's, it's, it's been good. I mean, it still helps us anyways. And it, it, we've been active. We've been busy. There's a lot of stuff to look at. We've got a lot of, we've added video to the blog, which is going to be very exciting. We kind of got a, a situation set up and, uh, we're now able to feature OHL videos and stuff like that. So we're going to try to include that. Uh, into our content 
Yeah, and like we've we've been approached by a lot of different um, different companies and media outlets and uh, various different uh, entities about opportunities and. It's great. Like, uh, there's been a lot of exposure to the blog lately, mm-hmm. and uh, we're just here to pump up the Barry Colts. Like, we're we're hardcore fans. Uh, we're hoping to work in hockey. So, um, yeah, just uh, the the best thing you guys could do for us is like uh, follow us on social media. Follow uh, us on Twitter at Very Very Colts Blog. You yeah, can use that, that same handle for the Instagram as well as the Facebook. You could also search very very cool's blog, but they are they're like handle oriented now as well, same as the other uh, forms of social media. So you can definitely uh, follow us there. Uh, obviously, as Ryan's mentioned multiple times in the past, and I stand behind him on it. You can subscribe to the podcast. We are literally now actually <laughs> officially on like every possible. Yeah, we've just finally after a very very long. Back- Trying to figure it out. We're now available on Spotify awesome. as well as iTunes, which we've been for a while, as well as Google Plus, uh, Google Play, sorry, uh, Podomatic. So, yeah, you can see us on YouTube, Podbean, Stitcher, Blurbery. I mean, yeah, we're, we're all over the place. So, yeah, go to the, basically when you go to the website, um, basically on the menu bar, there's podcasts there. And fourth option Ryan's got links to all those different, uh, different outlets, oh. media outlets. So check that out and subscribe and follow us on Twitter. Ryan MacArthur, Ryan P MacArthur, Ryan Noble. Um, do you have a number on there on the end? Oh, it's Mario Lemieux 66. 66. Yeah. yeah. Ryan Noble 66, Justin Stapleton, Staples 1311. And donate to Ben Howarchuk's campaign for November, right at the top of the page there. The so, handsome guy with the uh, with the classic baseball stash from like 1919. Nice. Uh, also, be sure to go and check out our pictures tab at the website. Our good friends at Cheap Seeds Productions. Yeah, they're doing a great job. We've gotten some great images, especially in this past couple weeks. We've been lucky enough that the team has kind of allowed us to to get out to get more pictures of game and that's of games, and that's that's a good step. Uh, also, uh, again, I can't get too much into it, but uh, we're hopeful to, uh, in the next few weeks, uh, get some actual interviews up on the website, which might even, maybe, fingers crossed, maybe we'll end up uh, getting shown at Colts games as well. So uh, we'll we'll update that as we go. Uh, we've recently also switched our shirt shop, uh, which is not just shirts. You can get sweaters, stickers, uh, phone cases, laptop case. There's there's a little bit of everything. I think you can even order a onesie if you want. I don't think many of our followers will be able to fit into them, <laughs> but they might be effective on your kids. So we've got a lot of great designs. We've got 20 designs now, all the old stuff, you know, and uh, right now, actually, if you go quickly, there everything is on sale, but that stuff goes towards the site. And that's money that we will be putting back into the blog because I don't know if people know this, but blogs are not free to run. No. Podcasts are expensive to host. So, you know, like this is stuff that we're not like, you know, we're not making a killing here. We're just trying to keep the site up, uh, you know, and just keep things going. So yeah, we, we aren't sipping margaritas on the beach. And uh, we're both drinking water. And actually, we've both yeah, exhausted our body. So, so we, we should stop. Really go, <laughs> we should stop. I can't even party. like that. Oh, I'm I'm exhausted. And that's 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 that pretty much sums it up. So uh, thank you for listening. Yeah. Uh, Hopefully everyone enjoyed it. Subscribe, and that's it. All right. Myself, Ryan Noble. Go Colts, go. Go Colts, go. I need organs. I'm vampiric. Appearing no mirror when I stand near it, and when I talk, you hear it as if a spear hit through your ear. Spirits get released in the air. Beware. Every lyrics stay shared on your gray matter. As a babe, I would play with a snake's rattle. Ever changing as the sun rays day shadows. I sling flame like a napalm rain shower. My brain waves pulse with a strange power. When I meditate, days imitate hours. Hypnotized and amazed by my talent, I strike like a diving bird with aim talents. I know not of challenge nor error. I know not of fear nor peril nor terror. Grave robbing burial plots of old pharaohs. Escape with the treasure back full of shot arrows. Raid of a